So you want to learn how to use rigid body physics in Blender? In this tutorial, I will walk you through a beginner's guide to rigid body physics in Blender, alongside different tips, tricks, and use cases for rigid body physics. Without wasting any more time, let's jump in and get started. Adding rigid body physics to objects in Blender is actually very simple. To start, select the object that you want to add physics to, and then click on the Physics tab. Here, you can see all of the different physics simulations in Blender. For this example, click Rigid Body. Now, if you play the scene, it'll fall straight down just like it would in the real world. Next, let's add a floor. Move your object up with G, Z, and then drag it up. Then click Shift, A, and add in a plane. Scale it up. This will act as our floor. Next, click on Rigid Body Physics. Now, if you play the animation again, you'll notice that they both fall. This is because you need to make the plane a passive rigid body object, meaning it doesn't move but it can still interact with objects in the scene. To do that, go back to the physics tab and under type, change it to passive. Now, if you click play, you'll notice that it falls and collides just like it would in the real world. Now, you can start experimenting with a bunch of different scenes, for example, you could try rotating the object, scaling the object, or duplicating the object. With that completed, let's move on to the next step. To level up our scene, let's learn how to use more complex shapes when doing rigid body physics. To start, I'll add in a cube like last time. Move it up, scale it down, and then go to the physics tab and add rigid body physics. Next, let's add in a sphere. This will be the complex shape that our cube interacts with. Click Shift A again, add in a sphere, and to make it more complex, let's delete the top half. So go into edit mode, go into wireframe mode, select the top half, and then click X, and then delete the faces. Now, let's add rigid body physics to this shape. Go back into the physics tab and click rigid body. Since we don't want it moving around, let's make it a passive rigid body object. So click on active, and then click passive. This should work. However, if you click play, you'll notice that the cube falls flat onto the sphere and doesn't actually go into it like a bowl. To fix this, go under the collision section and change the shape from convex hole to mesh. What this does is changes the shape that other rigid body objects interact with when colliding. Now, if we restart the animation and click play, you'll notice it falls right into the sphere. This can be used for tons of things. Maybe it could even be a fruit bowl. And there we go. Now we have our very own geometric fruit bowl. Now what do you do if you want to animate or move the objects around during the simulation? Let's try it out. To start, recreate a scene similar to what I have here. The cube is a basic rigid body object with the default settings, and the plane is another rigid body object, but its type is set to passive. Now, if you play the simulation and try to move the plane around while it's playing, you'll notice that even though we're moving the plane, the cube isn't interacting with it. In addition, if you also try to animate the plane to move around while the simulation plays, you'll notice that the cube doesn't interact with the moving plane. This is because the simulation is only using the position of the plane from the start of the animation and isn't actually updating it as it moves. To fix this, it's actually very simple. While selecting the plane, all you have to do is go under rigid body settings and check the animated box. Now, if you play the scene and move the plane around while the simulation goes, you'll notice that the cube continues to interact with the plane even as we move it around while the simulation is going. In addition, if you animate the plane to move during the simulation, you'll notice that the cube interacts with the moving plane. Based off this new concept, let's try to make a spinning blender using rigid body physics. And there we go. Now we have our very own physics based blender. In the next part, let's learn how to use field weights. A really fun and cool feature from Blender's rigid body simulations are the field weight settings. These settings allow you to tweak the different simulation settings in your scene, like the gravity and the effect of other forces in your scene. Let's learn how to use them. To start, 
make a similar scene to mine. I have a bunch of objects with basic rigid body components applied to them, and a plane with rigid body physics set to passive and with the animated button checked. Next, changing the field weights is also quite simple. To do it, just click on the scene properties, then go under rigid body world and click field weights. Here there's a bunch of settings you can change, but for this tutorial we're just going to be focusing on gravity. What this slider does is lowers the effect that gravity has on the objects in your scene. So the lower the slider is, the lower effect gravity has on the objects in your simulation. So if we lower it a bunch and play our simulation, you'll notice that the objects now fall slowly just like they would with low gravity. This could be used for a bunch of examples, like a space scene. Feel free to play around with it. As one last tip before we move on, if you've tried to play your simulation past the 250 frame mark, you may have noticed that the simulation stops after 250 frames. As you see, the objects stop being simulated. To fix this, it's also quite simple. Under the rigid body world settings where we just were, click on cache. Here, you can tweak the start and end frames of your animation. So for this case, I'm going to increase it. Now, if we play the simulation again, you'll notice the simulation continues to play past the 250 frame mark. And one last thing, before you render, don't forget to bake your cache. Now, let's combine all of this new information we've learned and make a giant Jenga tower that falls over. To finish off this tutorial, let's combine everything we've learned about rigid body physics and make a giant Jenga tower with a ball that smashes through it. To start, let's add in the floor. Go Shift A, add in a plane, and scale it up. Then under rigid body physics, click on rigid body and set it to passive. Next, the Jenga pieces. Add in a cube, scale it down, move it up, and then make it longer. You can make it look however you like, but for this case, I'm gonna try and make it look just like a Jenga piece. It's important that you make sure it's close to the ground, but not overlapping with the ground, as it might cause the rigid body objects to bounce around. That's a general rule of thumb for most rigid body objects, as when they overlap, they sort of explode. Now that we have one layer, I'm just gonna select all of them, duplicate them up, rotate them by 90 degrees, and place them carefully on top of the last row. If you need to scale them again, that's okay, just make sure they line up. Then I'll select all of our objects and keep duplicating until I get to a height that I'm happy with. I think that looks pretty good. Now to add rigid body physics to all of them, instead of going one by one and adding rigid body physics to all of them, there's actually a trick you can use. Select the plane, press Ctrl I, this just inverts your selection and selects every other object other than the plane. Then go to Object, Rigid Body, and Add Active. Now each of these different Jenga pieces has an active rigid body component to it. So if we play the scene, you'll notice that they have rigid body properties and are falling. Now let's add in the sphere that will knock over our tower. But before we do that, I'm actually going to scale up the plane because I noticed it's a little too small. To add in the sphere, let's click Shift A again and add in a UV sphere. I think this is too big so let's scale it down and move it over to the side. While selecting the sphere, click on rigid body, change it to passive, and like we learned last time, make sure you check the animated box. This is so that we can move it from left to right. Go to the start of the simulation and then press this button down here. What this does is automatically adds keyframes when you move the sphere. So for the starting frame, just click G, grab the sphere but don't move it around and just click again. Then. Move some frames forward, for this I'll just do 130 frames, and drag it over. Now if you restart the simulation, you'll notice that we have our very own crashing Jenga tower. Feel free to play around with this, like by changing the gravity, or by adding different objects, whatever you'd like to do. And there you have it, my beginner's guide to rigid body physics in Blender. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment down below with any questions, suggestions, or feedback. With that being said, I'll see you next time.